morning, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Thank you for joining us during our weekly MLS breakfast meetings. My name is Nanette Ong from Cobalt Banker George Realty, and I am your April program chair. A little about me. Now, I wanted to share something that I've learned during this pandemic, and that is that I am a terrible baker. Terrible. You know, everybody or a lot of people I know have gotten into uh, baking and making bread. So I decided to, to get in on the fun and bought myself a um, 25 pound bag of flour since there was no small bag left on the shelf. So I bought it from Costco and I tried to make bread and I'm just terrible. And here is one of the breads I just made recently. And it's a sourdough. I try to peel off the top and it's really hard, but it's not working for me, you know? This, you hear that? It's, it's not like, I can't, I can't do bread. But some of you have tried my banana nut bread and I've been able to do that. That's really good. But bread making <laughs> is not my forte. And um, after making all this bread, I realized that, you know, it only costs 50 cents at the store. <laughs> I spent six hours trying to make bread, proofing and trying to rise yeast. Anyways, that's my story during the pandemic. I don't know what you guys have learned during the pandemic. You could share it with us in the chat. We'd be uh, happy to hear about it. So it's all in fun. I hope everybody uh, still stay safe. And um, let's continue on with the rest of the uh, meeting. A few housekeeping tips. Uh, all those that have entered the uh, meeting will be muted upon entry. And if you should have a question or a comment, please enter it into the chat box and it would be addressed appropriately. Please also remember to join us weekly as we'll have our virtual MLS breakfast meetings every Thursday at 9 a.m. And as always, these meetings are being recorded and will be available online on our YouTube channel uh, of West San Gabriel Valley Realtors. Please also remember to stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you may also watch our pre-recorded videos on YouTube. You may also stay updated with our text messaging service. Please text WSGVR to the number 72727 for text alerts, text alerts and updates. And we move on to our quick tip of the week. And that is CRMLS role, duty to correct and cooperate. A participant and subscriber within two business days of a citation must correct any violation of the rules and regulations and bring the listing into compliance. Failure to do so, failure to correct violations or cooperate with an investigation under the rules and regulations within the, within the two business day correction period may be subject to a non-conforming listing to removal from the MLS database. Any fines levied against a participant under this section as a result of the actions of a subscriber under the participant may be transferred to an appropriate manager under the participant. You may also find more information on the website, uh, crmls.org. And uh, today's agenda consists of our affiliate spotlight, Judy Chow of AAA Capital Investments, followed by our speaker, Joseph Torres from the city of Monterey Park. He is our economic de development manager in the city of Monterey Park. And also as a reminder, to be eligible for today's raffle, you must be a WSDVR member and your name must be displayed to win. We will not accept telephone numbers. Today, our affiliate spotlight is brought to you by the affiliate committee, chaired by Sage Goldman of my NHD, with vice chair is Brandon Savarnsky of First American Title. Now we have our affiliate spotlight on Judy Chow. The floor is yours, Judy. Good morning. Um, could I have my first um, slice up? Okay. So I want to give you a little background about myself. I immigrated from uh, Taiwan. Oh. Can you hear me? I immigrated from Taiwan Republic of China uh, 10 years with my family. Next. And I graduated from UCLA for my bachelor degree in fine art, my master's degree in library information science. Next. Uh, I'm a practicing Buddhist. Uh, we promote youth event for world peace and community activities. Next. 
this is in 2019, we have 50,000 youth gathering throughout the United States and some participation throughout the world. Next, uh, during the COVID, uh, my friend in a group, uh, these are my friends in Remax Premier, we donated uh, PPE to various organization. Next, we donated to Kaiser Hospital and the police department. Next. I'm also um, on a committee to raise funds for education at the SUA Gala Committee. Um, this is in Aliso Viejo. Next. My hobbies are traveling. The top left, you can see the dome. That's the Hiroshima Dome with my husband and my granddaughter. And then to the right is the uh, Sun Moon Lake in Taiwan. And the bottom left is Hawaii. Next. And also I enjoy art. Uh, I went to the art gallery. This is the famous Jay Cabbage in Taiwan. And also I did the drawing just recently for the Chinese lunar year out on the right. Next. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've been um, doing loan uh, over two decades, um, primarily residential. My family has been in loan business for over three decades. My husband does commercial loan. I speak English and Chinese. Um, my experience call and for the best service as a loan officer, uh, beginning with immediate contact to provide fast service for you and your client. We have 24 hours approval and I'm sorry, 24 hours approval and 20 day funding. And I've worked with many real estate agents in purchase loan, including Remax, Coel Banker, Century 21, KW Compass and IRN Realty. So if you're interested to get a free uh, education for you on how to help with your client's purchase loan, you can text me, 818-481-8368. Uh, I'll get back to you uh, to talk about how to uh, approve your client in this market and uh, waiving the appraisal and the loan contingency and a bit over asking. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Uh, Judy is our new affiliate and please uh, you know, support her and, and welcome her and give her some calls uh, with some questions. Thank you. Today is our uh, now today's top affiliates. Mark Wool, Allstate Insurance. Good morning, everybody. Mark Wu with Allstate Insurance, one of our oldest affiliates, 33 years in business and been part of the board for more than two decades. Happy to be here to assist you with your insurance needs. Thank you, Mark. Next, we have Maria Howard of Old Republic Home Protection. Good morning, everybody. Maria okay. Howard here with Old Republic Home Protection. Great to be here. Thank you so much. But here we are, Old Republic Home Protection, always here to help you with your home warranty needs and concerns. My information's on the chat. I'd love to set a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you to talk about our free marketing tools and see how we can help you with your growing new business and staying in touch with your sphere. Have a wonderful Thursday. Bye. Thank you, Maria. Next, we have John Wax of SNAP NHD. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. John Wax with SNAP NHD, Natural Hazard Disclosures for all your NHD needs. I just want to wish everyone a wonderful week. It's beautiful weather. We're heading into uh, prime time as far as the real estate market goes. And uh, stay safe and get vaccinated. Thank you again. My information's in the chat. I wish you all well. 26 mm. years in the business to help you and your clients. Great. Thank you, John. Next, we have Nancy Chan from Lawyer's Title. Good morning, everybody. Maria, Mark, are we competing on seniority? <laughs> this, is, this is a lot of fun. You know what? Um, we love this association. We're still here to help you. And I think that's one of the things that we get joy out of is that we're making friends and helping people. Um, along the way. So Nancy Chan, 40 years in the industry like Maria with the lawyer's title, give me a buzz. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Sandy Franco of First American Home Warranty. I'm not gonna fight to be older or in anything longer. <laughs> Just do what I gotta do. Sandy Franco, First American Home Warranty. Have a fabulous uh, rest of your week, guys. Thank you, Sandy. Next we have Cosmo Sanchez of New Aim Funding. Good morning, I'm one of the younger affiliates here proud of that. Um, I'm able, I'm flexible. I can stay up late, work harder, go longer. No, no, uh, just kidding. But if you guys have any <laughs> questions, please go ahead and give me a call. Thank you. Bye-bye. Great. Next is Sage Gomez of My NHD. Good morning, everyone. Sage Gomez here with My NHD. And we're talking about how many years you've had 
I'm coming up on my two year anniversary. I can't believe I'm part of this association. It's been a crazy ride. It's been so great that I've been given this opportunity to be the chair affiliate. I love this group. I love this association. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, Sage. Next, we have Brandon Savarnsky of First American NHD. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone had a fantastic Easter and Passover. This is Brandon Savransky with First American NHD. Thank you, Brandon. Last but not least, you need a Wu of Home Warranty of America. Uh, she's not here today. Oh, she's not? Okay, then um, the last but not least was Brandon. Thank you, and please remember to uh, support our affiliates through your transactions. Next, we have Open Pitching by Stella Wu. Hi. Um Good morning, everyone. Just have facing some difficulties. Uh, this is the Pomona 295 South Park Pomona, two great corner commercial buildings in downtown Pomona for sale. The corner tenants has been there for more than 30 years, just like you guys, projecting state income. Good size for either owner self-use or lease. No worry about the parking because the public parking is right across the street. Capital is 5%. Have to fight against the inflation today. Um, price is include two buildings. In a total of building size is 4,074 square feet. Lot is 7,644 square feet. Sony as a mixed use central business area. Group potential investment property asking only $939,000. Thank you. Thank you. Next one it's um, 1588 West. South Highland Avenue in San Bernardino it is a good commercial. Uh, it is a commercial cell in good potential corner. First time on the market for more than 10, 20 years. Located near 210 and the 215 freeways. It is perfect for self-use or investment. Five tenants providing great positive cash flow. Current cap rate is 4.5% and performa 20, 2022 is uh, with 5.69%. Uh, zoning in a mixed use, commercial use, new building, senior apartment across the street, walking distance to the San Bernardino Community Hospital. There's also a bus stop right at the corner, uh, which brings more attention and traffic to the property. Great commercial use property with high potential asking uh, only for 1.19 million with performa 5.69% on to return your money. So bring your buyers in. Thank you. Thank you, Stella. Okay, that is the end of our open pitching. And we now move into today's speaker and we have Tomas Wong who will be introducing Joseph Torres. Thank you, Nanette. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. My name is Tomas Wong. I am the chair of the WSGBR Legislative Committee and the liaison of the city of Monterey Park. Last month, when I reached out to Mr. Joseph Torres, we agreed to invite him for our MLS breakfast meeting on April 1st. However, I remember during the conversation, we joke around about being April Fool's Day, but needless to say, due to his very busy schedule, today we are very fortunate and privileged to have him as the guest speaker. As the city of Monterey Park Economic Development Manager, Joseph Torres plans, designs, and implements economic and real estate development strategies, projects, and programs, and to make sure businesses and entrepreneurs in Monterey Park have easy access to all the city, county, state, and federal resources they need to rebuild their business, grow, and succeed. Whether it is business attraction, retention, expansion, job creation, business recovery, and continuity in facilitating the transition to the post-pandemic economy. Joseph is dedicated to advancing economic opportunity and prosperity for all the res all residents and businesses in Monterey Park through innovative and implementable approaches that promote inclusion, diversity, and accessibility. Prior to his current role in Monterey Park, 
Joseph Torre was the area director of business assistant and economic development at the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation, also known as LAEDC, providing business technical assistance, layoff aversion, and workforce, divert, and workforce development programs to businesses in the county and the city of Los Angeles. So please join me to give a warm welcome to Mr. Joseph Torre, Torres and a special thanks to the uh, city manager of Monterey Park, Ron Bold. Joseph, the floor is yours. Please take it away. Thank you, Nanette. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, Joseph. <clears throat> Thank you, Thomas, for that very kind introduction. Good morning, West San Gabriel Valley Realtors, uh, Board of Directors, uh, members, and affiliates. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Again, my name is Joseph Torres, Economic Development Manager, uh, and I head our Economic Development Division. And uh, like Cosmo, I'm the youngest speaker today, one of the youngest speakers today. And uh, like Nanette, I, I love bread, but unfortunately baking doesn't love me. But that's okay, Nanette, that's uh, why man invented bakeries. That's so why we get no love. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we can just go there and um, enjoy um, bread. We're in Monterey Park, post-pandemic. Therefore, our department's mission is to rebuild a vibrant, healthy Monterey Park economy by cultivating economic development opportunities that serve Monterey Park businesses and residents. Our vision is to be a catalyst for economic rebuilding and community investment that advances inclusion, diversity, and accessibility. To achieve that, we put together an economic recovery strategic plan with eight strategic focus areas. Uh, the first one is to um, start with our own selves, our internal department. You know, the, there's a new world order. The whole world has changed in the last uh, 14, 18 months. So we wanted to align the economic development department with a new strategy, develop recurrent knowledge training for our management and staff and revamp our economic development website uh, as well as repurposing our historic building El Encanto as an offsite EDD or economic development facility to increase visibility and engagement with the business community, community based organizations, and regional economic development partners, and be a resource to our other city departments as well. The second is to identify and build on cities' existing assets, to identify the assets that offer the best opportunities for rebuilding and growth and develop strategies to support them. Those assets include vacant commercial space, economic districts, uh, sales tax generators, natural beauty and outdoor recreations in this, uh, of Monterey Park, historic downtown, our, our beautiful library, arts and cultural institutions, and of course our crown jewel in Monterey Park, the East Los Angeles uh, College, along with Class A corporate centers and uh, again, our El Encanto historical building. Third is to engage business owners and other stakeholders of key industries that drive revenue to develop a vision for the future post pandemic. Form business recovery task force comprised of business owners here in Monterey Park and community stakeholders with key industries like restaurants, retail, hospitality and tourism and increase engagement with our economic development advisory committees. Number four is to make it easier for interested businesses, developers, and real estate brokers like you to invest in the community in ways that support the city's long-term priorities. One of those is to develop a concierge service, which, provide, which will provide one-on-one -on -one assistance from economic development to our planning department for site location assistance, um, provide list of available sites on economic development, the websites and to maintain close ties with you and uh, the property community. The fifth one is to focus on attracting and developing industry sectors that correlate to Monterey Park's strengths. Southern California's strongest and most resilient sectors should be a core focus of our ongoing business attraction and recovery work. For instance, light manufacturing, clean energy, high tech, logistics uh, that we can bring into our to Monterey Pass Road, uh, biosciences, healthcare, advanced transportation, um, and again, leveraging our East LA College and LA County business incubators to promote entrepreneur, entrepreneurship in our city. 
Number six is to take advantage of outside funding, which is, again, even a small amount of outside funding applied strategically to support certain industry clusters in our city can help increase local interest and commitment in the area and spur investment. Number seven is to encourage cooperation within the community and across the region. Local and regional cooperation to achieve jointly established priorities helps leverage the assets that each party can bring to the table to make the most of the region's success. And last, of course, a truly sustainable recovery for the long term must create quality jobs and equitable pathways into those jobs. So we want to establish partnerships with, with East LA College and the regional workforce centers like SBDCs and AJCCs, American Job Centers within the region to provide workforce training, upscaling and development, staffing, assistance, and of course, layoff aversion programs. So now that I've shared our economic strategic plan with you, it is my great pleasure to present an update on Monterey Park's major development projects. Um, I know we can all agree that land development is essential for our city's success, any city's success, and imperative for our community's prosperity. These development projects generate more jobs, bring desired curb appeal, unite community members, and maintain or increase home values. Whether the development is residential, commercial, or mixed use, these development projects that I'm going to present to you bring economic stability to our city, and for that matter, to any city. These projects also have a trickle-down effect on other industries. They are, an, they are an economic multiplier, if you will. Uh, these kinds of development activities put work to architects, engineers, builders and designers, realtors like you, and other industry trades that support large project developments. But these developments do more than employ workers in the field. They create new homes, offices, and retail buildings where people live, work, and shop. They generate new public open spaces where families can gather and play. Before I begin the presentation, I'd like to take a moment to thank the investors, developers, property owners, and realtors like you who, by recognizing the tremendous business opportunities the City of Monterey Park offers, have confidently and generously invested in our communities. Economic development is a team sport. So I also want to thank our City Hall staff, our planning team, engineers and inspectors. They are our outstanding public service professionals who work tirelessly with the developers, contractors and realtors like you in making sure these development projects follow the vision and strategy for land use, for land use planning that our city council, our stakeholders and our residents have put in place. A big thank you to all of you. So let's begin the presentation. The first one I'd like to show you is Monterey Park's crown jewel, the 500,000 square foot power center, the marketplace. The main anchors are Home Depot and Costco. To this date, there are about 13 business establishments at the marketplace, including the newest one, Ono Hawaiian Barbecue, which just opened recently. This location is somewhat unique among all the other Ono Hawaiian Barbecue locations because it has a drive through This is also the first ever Ono Hawaiian Barbecue location that they've designed from the ground up, with the interior decor being quite exquisite to the company theme. And we've also just learned that the marketplace has received a letter of intent from another well-known business that wants to come to the marketplace, Chipotle. Uh, they will be occupying the space between Ono Barbecue and Buffalo Wild Wings. Court, uh, Courtyard by Marriott is a six-story, 288-room hotel with ancillary retail space on the southwest corner of Atlantic Boulevard and Hellman Avenue. The 210,390-square-foot project includes two subterranean parking levels containing 351 spaces, along with 14 surface level spaces providing adequate off-street parking. A second floor deck is provided, including a pool, a spa, a decorative water feature, outdoor seating, wood benches with canopies, a fire pit, outdoor bar, shaded cabanas, outdoor media, and TV lounge. Soft opening is projected for spring this year, and grand opening is projected for summer this year as well. Uh, 420 North Atlantic is a Holiday Inn Suites mixed use. It's 134 hotel rooms with 84 condominium units. The two buildings that you see, one in front of the other, are the condominiums. They have started concrete finishing and framing up to the sixth floor of the condominium portion. They have now started to lay the foundation for the building that will house the hotel, 
which is going to be fronting Atlantic Boulevard, as you can see in the picture below with the rendering of the hotel building. 795 West Garvey on the corner of Garvey and Atlantic is a multi-tenant commercial space with 5,200 5, square feet in the northeast corner of the intersection. This project's property owner, uh, unfortunately, has been a little slow with the development process, but the good news is they've recently submitted a traffic control plan and things are moving forward again. The other good news is the building already has a signed tenant. 120 West Hellman, uh, which is on the corner of Hellman and Baltimore, is a multi-tenant uh, multi medical office condominium. The city is currently working with Southern California Edison on the electrical side, and the street permit is near completion. We expect this project to be completed soon. 540 West Garvey Avenue is a mixed use with 5,000 square feet of retail and 5,000 square feet of commercial. This is also near completion and will take approximately about three to four months to complete. The city is working with a property owner to bring in a corporate tenant that would occupy the entire second floor of the building. 616 New Avenue, uh, this is a 7-Eleven store and gas station in the southeast corner of New Avenue and Hellman. The building is about 4,000 square feet and it is now in the third round of plan review. 1800 West Garvey Avenue. For those of you that are old time residents of Monterey Park, this used, this used to be Trader Joe's. It is a retail building with 7,400 square feet. The remodel was completed in 2019. The building is unique in that the interior dividing walls are movable to conform to tenant space needs. The city is working with the owner on a possible tenant. P01 East Garvey, also known as Jade Plaza, is a rebuild of a fire damaged commercial center. The rebuilding has been completed and the center has started leasing. As you can see, there is still fencing around the property. This is to keep the homeless and vandals away. 2439 South Garfield, this is a gas station with a Starbucks. This is the current uh, Arco station located in the southwest corner of Gar Garfield and Pomona, right alongside the 60 freeway. I'm happy to report that the engineering and planning are in the works. So that's moving, uh, moving um, quickly um, as we speak. Racing Canes is coming to 1970 South Atlantic Boulevard in Monterey Park. The city is working with Racing Canes and the building and engineering are both in plan check. Uh, 2500 Davidson, um, it's a, it's, the company is called A1 Self Storage. Uh, it is a 107,580 square foot multi-story self storage that will occupy the corner lot on Davidson and Monterey Pass Road. And for some of you who might be familiar with this area, this lot has been empty forever. So we're really very happy that, um, you know, it's now being utilized. Coming to Atlantic Square this year, we're very, I'm, I'm very pleased to report that we have three new businesses or business establishment coming to Atlantic Square. Uh, Silver Lake Ramen is a welcome addition to our city's fine portfolio of renowned restaurants. Silver Lake Ramen operates a handful of locations in Southern California. This restaurant embodies the free spirit and casual vibe of Monterey Park. They're hugely popular, grossly trendy, and very delicious. Signature dishes include the blaze, a spicy tonkatsu ramen bowl with your choice of protein, spicy pork broth, bean sprouts, spinach, green onion, seaweed, and egg. You can tell it's one of my favorites. Uh, Silver Lake is also known for its pork belly, so can't wait for it to open. Another great restaurant coming to Atlantic Square is Every Table, which also operates a handful of locations in the greater LA area, and we're happy and proud to have them here in Monterey Park. Every table believes nutritious food is a human right. Every aspect of their business was designed to make fresh, delicious food available to everyone. And that's why they call it Every Table. Their central kitchen in Los Angeles allows them to chef prepare meals efficiently and price them according to what each community can afford. So it's a very interesting business model. Of course, at, at Atlantic Square, uh, Monterey Park residents can eat to their heart's content. Why? Because Fit Body Boot Camp is also coming to the center. Fit Body Boot Camp is a fitness franchise that specializes in fitness training and health education. Now, what differentiates them from other general gyms, Fit Body Boot Camp focuses on proper nutrition education, resistance training, and cardiovascular exercise uh, that will help our residents achieve their fitness missions hopefully faster. Of course, everyone knows about Atlantic Square. Uh, we are finally 
um, seeing the much awaited redesign of the center's north end. Although they're still working on the final plans, the property owners have given the city a preview of the 30,000 square foot redesign. 126 New Avenue is called the Whitmore Villas. Um, it's on 126, uh, it's, it, it has 66 town homes on 2.74 acres. The city is review, reviewing conditions of approval and should go to planning commission by, uh, well, by this month, April. Uh, Monterey Park Town Center on Garvey and Garfield is a proposed 70,000 square foot of retail with 108 residential units surrounded by major anchor and specialty shops, as well as eating places with permanent outdoor dining. Town Center will be host to restaurants, small retail business, professional financial and medical service establishments. As you can see, it's, a concept, it's still a concept, conceptual design. The architects are still working on the plans which they plan on sub submitting to the city by next month. Atlantic and Garvey Mixed Use. This is another project in conceptual design. It's a mixed use building at the, at the 2.1 acre vacant lot on the Southwest corner of Atlantic and Garvey. And again, for those of you that have been to Monterey Park a lot, I mean, that's, that corner has been empty forever as well. So we're very happy, very excited that this beautiful building is about to come up. Next slide, that's it. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this update as much as I've enjoyed presenting it to you. I am going to turn it over to our gracious host for the Q&A session. Thank you, Joseph. And I apologize for earlier leaving you unanswered in between slides. I thought I was uh, speaking, but I didn't realize I was muted. Uh, so no worries. No worries. Sorry you about did a that. good job. <laughs> Thank you. And, and thanks for sharing all these great uh, developments going on in the city of uh, Monterey Park. It uh, looks like it's a promising for our, our economy. So glad to hear all these developments um, popping up. So next, let's move on to our questions. And let's see, we have some questions. Let's start off with is um, first question. Does the city of Monterey Park have a list of new or coming affordable housing units offered to residents? Well, that's- I know this well, is something aside yeah, from your presentation. No, it's okay. I mean, it's <clears throat> housing is, affordable housing is a very um, important subject matter for for all cities now nowadays, for everyone, for that matter. Um, and the, answer, the, the short answer to that is yes and, and no, because um, the housing element is one of the seven mandatory elements of all the city's general plan, uh, including ours. So it's the, the housing element specifies ways in which the housing needs of existing and future resident populations can be met. And right now we're actually working on our um, housing element that would be for the next uh, seven to eight years. Our current housing element covers the period that started from January 2014 through September 30 of this year. Uh, and each housing element includes identification and analysis of existing and projected housing needs, resources and constraints. So that's the study that we're doing right now in order for us to identify the specific needs of the city uh, and based on the numbers that Rena has given us as well. Um, then we put together a statement of goals, policies, quantified objectives, and scheduled programs for preservation, improvement, and development of housing, um, identification of adequate sites for housing, and the provision of existing and projected needs of all economic segments of the community. So uh, that's the long answer to the question that says, yes, we will have affordable housing, uh, but no, it's not available yet because we're still working on it. Great, thank you, Joseph. And our yeah. next question is, has the city considered a streamlined process to help or incentivize developers who offer SB 35 affordable housing in their projects? And are there any incentives for the size? Def the, definitely the answer is yes. Uh, in fact, I mentioned uh, during my presentation on our economic recovery strategic plan that our goal is to make it easy for investors for businesses and for realtors like you to um, invest in our communities, to sell our properties, to lease our properties. And part of that is to provide a concierge desk type of service to streamline that process. 
uh, it, it all starts from the you know from the from from the start where where economic development gets involved and it gets handed over to planning and it gets handed over to public works and to to fire um, inspections and, and and it just our goal is to provide a seamless process um, in 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 that um, from start to finish. And to answer your question about the incentives, there are incentives that are going to be in place. However, it is based on the nature of the project. So um, once we get the, the plans or the application submitted, then we can sit down and address those uh, available incentives. Great, thank you, Joseph. You're welcome. Uh, next question is, there is a growing population of young adults who want affordable housing and also a growing age of seniors looking for new and affordable housing. Has Monterey Park taken any of this into consideration in the current general plan? Yes, again, uh, we are in the process of working on our, on the housing element of the general plan. And part of that is to identify and analyze the existing and projected housing needs of the communities. So definitely we are taking that into consideration. The last question regarding senior projects uh, and affordable housing is, um, this question is, they encountered a scenario where once, where the developer was offering a senior project and once the letters go out to residents within 500 feet of the project or proposed project, the residents in the neighborhood oppose. And the response is basically, basically that the project is great as long as not on my street. I guess the question is whether, or, or how does a Monterey Park plan to address that? Sorry, they, they didn't actually have a question on this. They, it was a statement, I, I'm guessing that they were asking how does Monterey Park address this or how? Um, you know, we address it in several ways, um, you know, and it's, it's a classic, uh, you know, problem that every city uh, faces. You know, it's called a NIMBY. It's not in, not in my own backyard. It's okay as long as it's not in my own backyard. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and there are ways that we can achieve our goals of affordable housing. And maybe we should change that name to housing that's affordable because <laughs> affordable housing for some reason has this negative connotation. So mm -hmm. um, maybe we need to change uh, people's perception of that. Um, housing that's affordable doesn't have to be housing that brings down the value for your neighborhood. You know, we have ways of achieving our affordable housing or housing that's affordable go, um, you know, not through, I mean, through several ways. One of those is by density, you know, by, by adopting um, measures like mixed use developments um, where you can, you know, have more units per, you know, per, per square foot. You know, that's one way of, you know, um, providing affordable housing, but at the same time not affecting, you know, the, the average home value. Uh, another one is by looking at, you know, some of the new technologies that are available, like additional units or ADUs as well. You know, those provide, you know, decent affordable housing, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily affect, you know, the neighborhood values. So, you know, we do have a way of addressing those concerns by the community. And the best way to approach that is through communication. And part of that uh, housing element um, development process is to do a study session, uh, a submit, um, you know, address whatever comments that, that, that the, or conduct public input sessions, uh, address whatever comments that are being heard. And, you know, make sure that the community understands that, you know, what we're doing is for the overall benefit of the community. And it is not necessarily to lower the values of the homes or which is their number one concern. Okay, great. We do have a comment, some, uh, some agreements with uh, your suggestion to stop using the word affordable housing in our chat box. <laughs> I think if we can get uh, everyone to start saying housing that's affordable, I think that's going to change some negative perception out there. Yes, we need an acronym for that one, like NIMBY. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, 
Thank you, Joseph. And as so as, as for regarding these senior projects, are you the first point of contact for dialogue regarding the senior housing project or is there someone we yes. can refer to? Yes, I will be the first point of contact. Um, our goal is to make economic development uh, the face of the city to the community. As that way, then we can be the traffic director. Um, we all know how difficult and how frustrating it is if you want something done and you have to call city hall and you know it's like a maze you don't really you know you get transferred to different departments uh 2500 times before you finally find you know the right department for you to work with so what what we'd like to do is make economic development the face of the city or the face of the city especially city hall to the business community so anytime an entrepreneur um wants to open a business anytime a business wants to grow Anytime a business wants to add or do whatever it is that requires city hall uh, involvement, then all they have to do is contact the economic development department and will hold their hand all through the process. That's great to hear. Thank you, Joseph. And Joseph's number is on the slide uh, before you with any questions. Our next uh, question is regarding the developments in Montre Park. Did the city of Monterey Park consider the traffic jam and parking spaces from these proposed developments? Yeah, all developments required uh, traffic studies um, and density, um, as well as economic, um, you know, impact uh, reviews or EIRs. So mm -hmm. yes, the answer to that question is definitely. Um, you know, every time there's a development, they have to look at the, the number of parking spaces required. Per, uh, per total number of employees, as well as uh, a traffic, uh, you know, density study that, you know, that new develop will will result into uh, for the community. There's one question about the Raising Cane. Now that I know there was some contention about that one. Is that going through with the Raising Cane or is it still through the um, approval process? You know, it is going through. They have, Raising Cane has not, uh, withdrawn their application. In fact, they are submitting their um, advanced uh, floor plans uh, and revised floor plans as well. Uh, about a few months ago, um, you know, during one of our council meetings, um, you know, there was a lot of um, comments from the public that we, from the residents in the immediate area of Racing Cane, that we received about concerns about noise. Uh, concerns about traffic and racing cane uh, has always been a, a good corporate citizen and you know they've made adjustments on their construction in response to their to those public comments for instance uh, when it comes to noise they committed to lowering the volume of their drive-through speakers and they've also cut their uh, drive-through hours Typically, a uh, racing cane's uh, operating hours for drive-through is until about two o'clock in the morning. Um, they've agreed to address the noise concerns and the traffic concerns by having drive-through operations limited to about eleven o'clock at night. So, you know, they're very flexible and they're very accommodating. So, I think they're going to go through. Thank you. And one last question we have time for is. What are the major challenges that the city of Marnie Park is facing with the business recovery program? You know, it's, it, it's a challenge that almost everyone is facing right now um, because, you know, the city of Monterey Park is mostly small business and small businesses generally provide in-person services at a local level. These include restaurants, bars, hair salons, nail salons, laundry services, and more. As you know, the public health crisis of COVID-19 prevented such services due to the risk of transmission associated with unnecessary person-to-person -person contact. These businesses, these services that rely on personal interaction are often incompatible with remote work from home, leaving a lot of these businesses with few reliable streams of revenue, if any, during the pandemic and little cash on hand. Larger businesses, conversely, tend to have higher levels of liquidity and more channels for revenue through e-commerce, uh, through you know, um, white collar workers that are able to work from home. Um, thus, smaller businesses have felt much greater financial distress than larger ones. So that is our issue right now at Monterey Park. 
is to try to address, because there's really uh, two tales of recovery that we are having to address. You know, one is, and more important is, you know, the, you know, the small business, um, you know, we need to make sure that they have the tools and programs and resources they need to rebuild and reopen and thrive and hopefully grow and succeed. And, you know, on the other hand, it is not our job to tell them how or to when to open their businesses, because if anything that's going to revitalize our local economy, it's not government, it's not city hall, it's the business owners, because they're the ones who know how to run their business well. Um, they, do, they, they do what they do best. So our role in this recovery effort is to make sure that they have all the support, all the programs, all the resources they need to run their businesses as they know best. Uh, and the challenge, of course, is, you know, cities don't have that much resources. So we have to rely on, um, you know, a lot on uh, a regional collaboration, um, on the county resources, state resources, and federal resources as well. And also from support from the communities and organizations like you. So hopefully we can work hand in hand in partnership because I know that we all have the same goals, which is to advance opportunity and prosperity for everyone. Thank you, Joseph. Very informative presentation. And uh, that ends our Q&A. On behalf of WSGVR, we'd like to thank you for your, uh, your thorough presentation. We've, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, now we move on to our attendance drawing. And please remember that uh, you must be a um, WSGVR member to win, and your name must be displayed and no telephone numbers. Let's uh, start the wheel of names. Thank you again, Joseph. So our first winner is going to be hopefully here, and it is Anderson Quo. We have Anderson Quo here. Let's see. Is Anderson uh, here? No, let's move on. No. Okay. Let's move on to the next. Next we have Daniel Chan. Daniel is here. Congratulations, Daniel, Daniel if you're here. You are our first winner of this morning. Daniel, please, please type in the chat box if you're here and please type in your email address. Okay, Daniel. while he is, while he, while we are waiting for him, let's spin for the next. Daniel, please type in your email address. Okay, our next winner is going to be, mm, from roll, Tanya Garcia. Tanya Garcia is not here. Not here. Okay. Two or more drawings. Else. Who is next? Next, we have our second winner is going to be, yes, it's going to be who? Philip Chang. Phil, Philip Chang. Philip Chang is not here. Oh, Philip Chang, that's just a shame, too bad. Next Come one, on. we're still number two. Did uh, the first one respond? No, yeah. Daniel yeah. hasn't responded. Sean is there. Ah, Sean is here. here. Yes, yeah, she's here. here. Please type in the chat box. Sean, congratulations. Thank you. You are either your, you are either our first or second winner. Can Daniel Chen please confirm in the chat box? Daniel has not confirmed. If he has not, he does not claim. Angela Hong is our next winner. Uh, no, no Angela today. No Angela. Okay. More for everybody else. Let's see who is our next winner. Many chances for everyone else. It is going to be, and it is Ami Adini. Ami he is usually here, so is he here I'm today? Here. Oh, oh. Okay, let's draw someone that's let's here. See. Oh, Daniel just responded, so he is our first winner. Thank you, Daniel. No, no this, is a, this is Daniel Chen. We, we pulled Daniel Chen, C-H-A-N. Oh, okay. Okay, this is the H A N. Thank you, this, Caesar. This is, Need a chance. Oh, this is a different John, Daniel. 
John, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. S I H. John Sai is here. Oh, maybe Sai. John Sai. John Sai sounds good to me. Is John here? John is. John is. Okay. John. Can you type in the chat box, and if he does not type in the chat box, let's try for the next winner as the backup. John, you're here, right? Yes. yes. Okay, please type in your name and your email address. There he is. He just there did. He goes. Great. Okay. So we are so, still looking for our third winner because Daniel Chan replied, yes. but it's Daniel Chan. Oh, I'm sorry. It's my fault. So we have one more lucky winner for the day. Should go buy a lotto ticket. And that is Peter. Peter, Peter is here. Great job. Congratulations, Peter Compolio. If you can just type in the chat box and let us know you're here to claim your prize. And as the last winner, go buy a lotto ticket today. You might be winning again. Peter. Okay, is he here? Yeah, if, Peter yes, is here, but he's not replying. It's okay. If he's not replying, doesn't count. Let's make a backup. Backup spin, please. We're having too uh, much backup. <laughs> We're having too much backup. I think that's. Is, is he the backup? I don't know who is the backup. Have, Belen, are time? you in track of this now? Because she's pulling, she's pulling too many people. I'm, I'm here. Oh, there he is. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, great. Because so, you keep on pulling, people think they win. Okay, so. Right, let's yeah. back up. Okay, that ends our attendance drawing. Thank you and congratulations to all the winner. Let's move on to our next slide, which is our education classes. Please join us for our educations throughout the month. Uh, next one is Glide for Forms. After that is Safer at Home and Learn, uh, Home Harding and the NHD. The next one is Virtual Training, Glide Overview, and then the Top Producer Panel. Thank you. And then we have a reminder for, the, for our members, nominations are now being accepted for director positions. The deadline for this uh, submission for your application is the end of the week, uh, that is tomorrow. Friday, April 9th by 5 p.m. Those of you who are interested in a, a director position, please apply. We would love to see your application. And next, thank you everyone for joining us. Our next meeting is April 15th. And joining us will be uh, attorney Elizabeth Yang with her topic on family law, which includes divorce and uh, uh, asset separation. And please remember to support our affiliates with your transactions. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a good morning, have a good weekend.